Eighth grade open up resources, illustrative mathematics. Unit six, lesson one, organizing data. Problem number one. Here is data on the number of cases of whooping cough from 1939 to 1955. A, make a new table that orders the data by year. Here I've organized the data in order from 1939 to 1955. B. Which years in this period of time had fewer than 100,000 cases of whooping cough? Here you can see that the years 1948, 49, 51, 52, 53, 54, and 55 had fewer than 100,000 cases of whooping cough. C. Based on this data, would you expect 1956 to have closer to 50,000 cases or closer to 100,000 cases? By looking at the data, I can see the number of cases decreases over time. So I would expect that 1956 would most likely have closer to 50,000 cases than 100,000 cases. Problem number two. In volleyball statistics, a block is recorded when a player deflects the ball hit from the opposing team. Additionally, scorekeepers often keep track of the average number of blocks a player records in a game. Here is part of a table that records the number of blocks and blocks per game for each player in a women's volleyball tournament. A scatter plot that goes with the table follows. Label the axes of the scatter plot with the necessary information. We have a horizontal axis and a vertical axis. Since the horizontal axis goes up to 30 and the vertical axis only goes up to 2, the horizontal axis could be labeled as blocks and the vertical axis could be labeled as blocks per game. Initially, I thought this looked pretty unusual because there were 0.5 blocks and 7.5 blocks, 1.5 blocks, but then I reread the information and it said that they were keeping track of the average number of blocks a player records in a game. So if this is the average number of blocks, that would make sense. Problem number three from eighth grade unit five, lesson 18. A cylinder has a radius of four centimeters and a height of five centimeters. A, what is the volume of the cylinder? The information tells us that the radius of the cylinder is four centimeters and the height of the cylinder is five centimeters. We can plug that information into the formula. Volume equals pi times r squared times height. We can substitute r with a four and substitute the h with a five. The volume equals pi times four squared times five. We can rewrite this as volume equals pi times 16 times five. And since 16 times five is 80, we can rewrite this as pi times 80 centimeters cubed or 80 times pi centimeters cubed. So the volume is 80 times pi centimeters cubed. B, what is the volume of the cylinder when its radius is tripled? Well, originally the radius was four centimeters. If we triple four, we get 12. So now we can substitute the R with a 12. The volume equals pi times 12 squared times the height. Since the height is five, we can substitute the H with a five. 12 squared equals 144. So the volume equals pi times 144 times five. 144 times five is 720. So the volume would be 720 times pi centimeters cubed. C, what is the volume of the cylinder when its radius is halved? That means its radius would be cut in half. Half of four centimeters is two centimeters. So we can substitute the R with a two. Volume equals pi times two squared times five. Two squared or two times two is four and four times five is 20. So the volume of this cylinder would be 20 times pi centimeters cubed. Be sure to support my YouTube channel by liking this video, leaving a comment, and subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.